Boom! What's going on everyone? This is Steve Larson. This is Sales Funnel Radio and today we're going to talk about the difference between good cash and bad cash in your business and why you should never accept bad cash. I've spent the last four years learning from the most brilliant marketers today and now I've left my nine to five to take the plunge and build my million dollar business. The real question is how will I do it without VC funding or debt completely from scratch? This podcast is here to give you the answer. Join me and follow along as I learn, apply, and share marketing strategies to grow my online business using only today's best internet sales funnels. My name is Steve Larson, and welcome to Sales Funnel Radio. What's up, guys? Hey, I actually uh, I love funnel building live in front of a lot of people, and for some reason, I don't know what, I don't know why, but I don't know. Like usually, like eight hours into it, I start. <laughs> I don't know if I get a little chip on the shoulder attitude or if I get a little, I don't know what it is. But uh, for me, that's where I usually have the most prolific things coming out of my brain. <laughs> and so what I did is, uh, luckily I screen record all of them. What I wanted to do is I wanted to go through and I want to share with you guys my strategy for when to take on cash and when to not. Okay, I know right now how to go make 100 grand in the next month. Even far more than that, okay? That's not an easy, I'm sorry, that's not a hard thing for me to do anymore. That's an easy thing for me to do now, okay? And that's not the showboat, but the reason why I don't go grab it is the thing I wanna to explain to you guys in this episode. Now, that might sound crazy to you. I know I'm gonna get some backlash for this episode, but you need to understand the difference between good cash and bad cash. My business works for me. Okay, I don't work for my business, you understand? Now, obviously I go set stuff up, I go put things together, but I, as quickly as humanly possible, my whole goal is to set up systems that replace me as the operator in my company. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna be able to walk through and share with you guys why, <laughs> Okay, one of the major reasons I'm doing this right now is because there's several, several, several times in the last, uh, especially like two or three months, where I've been offered a lot of money to go and do a funnel for somebody and I've said no. And it's gotten out that I said no. And what I wanna do is I wanna address that. I want you to know why I said no to certain scenarios. I want you to know why I say no to certain cash, even though it's easy cash, right? Even though I know, like, and they're like begging, okay? But I still say no. What I'm gonna do is you guys are gonna see me in this episode, okay? What I'm doing, in, okay, I screen recorded, okay? We're gonna flip over here in just a moment. And what I'm doing is, um, this is the fifth uh, segment of a seven part series that I did, uh, I think about a month ago where I went through and um, I was building a funnel live, okay? Not just the funnel though, literally from the ground up, I designed and wrote the actual sales message and then I built the actual, actually wrote the actual message live, screen recorded in front of like 75 people, okay? What you're seeing in this next piece, I'm building out and I'm finishing the last few pieces of the funnel and I'm building what I call, I've, I've come, I, I don't know what else has made it. I call it a waiting list funnel, okay? It's literally its own funnel on the side when someone doesn't take action. And somebody is asking me, Steven, why do you have a waiting list funnel and why do you remove the option for somebody to even purchase, okay? That, again, might sound crazy, but please listen to my answer here. This might be a little bit of a longer episode, but I think it's gonna really, really help you as you see what I see as I do this, okay? Remember, I brought 1,800 people through this process now. Paying people, okay, you understand? Who paid to specifically learn that thing? That's just not like episode listeners, okay? They specifically came for that, okay? And, and what I want you to see is, right, I got a unique position looking down and like seeing all these different funnels that are out there. Which ones make it, which ones don't, okay? And I want you to understand how powerful of the concept this is. And if you are like, Oh my gosh, Steven, there's so much opportunity out there. I completely get it. Please know this is how I handle that and how I don't get distracted. Okay, the answer to all that is in this next episode. I'm very excited for you guys to be here. So again, guys, thank you so much. This is good cash, bad cash. Please keep that in your mind when you have opportunities come to you. They will only increase as you increase in your success. So you have got to get good at identifying good cash versus bad cash, right? Cash that is progressive versus cash that is a distraction to you, okay? So don't, anyway, this is gonna help you see how I go through that process and how I know whether or not I should accept cash from this opportunity or from that opportunity or should I say no to it and how should I say no to it and why and what things, you know what? I wish I could say yes to that, but what should I do to actually get my business ready for it? All those answers are inside this episode. Guys, thank you so much for listening. If you like this, please, please like and uh, share and, and subscribe to this. It really means a lot to me. I actually have a ton of fun reading the reviews. They keep me motivated. You pump me up, and I really want to keep doing that. So anyways, let's cut over to the episode, and uh, please enjoy. The waiting list is just filtering BS and creates agony or something? Yeah. Uh, 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 quite literally, you're, the two tools that you have two tools that you have as a marketer, you've got scarcity and urgency, right? So I know my product's amazing, 
and you guys all know your products are amazing. So what keeps people from acting? What keeps people from acting and actually buying, even though your pro- you know your product's amazing and you know they could help them, what keeps people from buying is that people don't close. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to close them. Buy it, buy it, buy it. You know what I mean? I'm trying to close them. And if I don't, right, it, it literally, I, it cookies their IP address, not their email. <laughs> I mean, does that make sense? They can't just even go get it with another email address. They will not get there. It actually auto forces the entire session to go to the waiting list. And it says, sorry, I work with action takers. <laughs> Look, get on the waiting list. Uh, you know, we, we open up to people uh, in my own list anywhere from it's sometimes it's twice a year, usually once a year, but pay attention to your email. let you know when a few seats open up. Okay. How long do I make them wait? Depends. I mean, sometimes I literally do make them wait six months to a year, man. Like, I, I'm serious. You know, I, I'm not. If I'm gonna have scarcity and urgency, it's gonna be real scarcity. And urgency. I don't pull fake scarcity and urgency on people. If I'm like, it is open, then it is open. If it is closed, they cannot purchase. I don't even care if they want to. I make it that way because I'm training my buyers. Okay, I'm training my audience. When I say it's time to jump, right? And this is this is part. You gotta understand. You gotta understand. Could I go right now, right now, I know exactly how to go pull another hundred grand. I know exactly how to pull even much more than that, okay? But my business works for me. Does that make sense? These are all little things that I do to make the business work for me. I I do not work for the business. Does that make sense? So it fits my lifestyle. So I know how to go, I like, there's a lot of more, there's a lot, and it sounds crazy, okay? So my job then is to not constantly just like, like I'm closing, right? I'm closing all the time and I'm bringing people in, but I'm mostly building systems that close. I'm building systems that bring people in. I'm building, if I am the only one 24 seven bringing in cash, if I am the only one 24 seven that's going in and servicing and and doing the fulfillment, my business dies when I do, or my business dies on the Saturday. I just decide not to work that Saturday, right? That's not a business. A business is a series of systems in place that work when you don't. Okay. So it is not my job to constantly be bringing people in just because it's there. Not all business is good business. And in fact, I'd say the majority of business is bad business for your business, bad, right? There's bad cash. I don't want good. I don't want bad cash. So I go in and I grab cash that is good when I am good and ready to grab it. And I win when they are good and ready to pay for it. And if it is real, I make it real. So they cannot buy. It's not a fake thing. And I have had people reach out and tell me, crap, I waited too long. Yep. That's the answer. <laughs> Watch your freaking email. <laughs> That's the answer. So it is real because my business works for me. Does that make sense? I have done the game many times though, many times where it's been the other way. And I'm like, and I, you, you end up, here comes a little, okay. Where's a freaking soapbox. Okay. This is going to drop some gold here. Oh, dropped it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Check this out. Many times I have equated deals with value, meaning look at all these deals I have. Therefore, I must be of value. That's crap. It's garbage. It's, it is not true. Do not believe it. Okay. The number of deals that you have coming in, oh, I must be so valuable. I must have all this cash coming in and it feels good. It strokes your ego a little bit, but man, it is not true. Okay. Deals don't equal cash. Deals don't equal value and deals do not equal lifestyle. Okay. I first have gone through after a lots of experience, okay, years of sprinting my face off, okay, sleeping a few hours a night, okay, I swear I've trained my body to have energy, okay, I think that's part of it, okay, years, years and years and years and years, being in the army, married, have kids, right, full time in school, and doing all this, right, but like aggressively, okay, years of actively taking every single little deal that came my way. Oh my gosh. Oh, you have cash to give me? Okay, I'll take it. And then it ends up making me a slave to my business. That is not why I'm doing this. Okay. My role, it is the reason I don't study ad spend. Um, it's the reason I don't, I study the stuff that is the highest leverage activities. What are the things, what are the systems I can build funnels that I can build in place of me? So that when I'm not there, it's still going on. You know, it's so cool to see how many sales came in yesterday while I was talking to you. I didn't close them. The systems did. Okay. I didn't fulfill on them. The systems did. And it takes a little a little while longer. There's been some people who be like, Steven, you built almost one funnel a day at ClickFunnels. I'm like, yeah. How come you've only built a few on your own? Well, I don't have a giant team like Russell does. That's fine. 
okay? Well, I, I don't have, like, he's got deep multi-million dollar pockets to just like, bam, bam. He does not waste money at all. But to, like, activate this crazy amount of team around the world. He's got, right, he's got all this stuff, okay? And the foolish thing for me to do is to compare myself to someone like Russell, okay? The foolish thing for you to do is to compare me to Russell. I am not him. Okay? I am Steven Larson. I do not have the assets he has. I do not have the backing he has, and that's fine. I've studied my face off. I've gotten where I have. You know, it's been awesome. But you got to understand, like what I'm building, it's from a different sphere than what he's doing. Okay, it's from a different. Okay, I am glowing it, and that's why I'm publishing so much right now, so you can follow me while I take a leap, which is frankly, it was a little bit ludicrous, but to show you how I knew it'd be safe. And take you on the journey while I do this. Systems are businesses. People are not businesses. Okay? People can be in parts of the system, but they are still not the business. Okay? So when I go through and I build a system, that's all a business is. And if I'm the only one operating it, I don't have a business. If I can't match numbers, if I can't look at numbers and be like, check it out. Okay, I know my conversion rates. Okay, I know this. I know this. I know this. That's not a business. If I don't know my numbers, I have no business. That's one of my quotes on my wall. It's... It's no, K-N-O-W. It's no numbers. If you know your numbers, then you know business. If you have N-O, if you have no numbers, you have no business. So if I'm chasing every single deal, if I, here, cause here's the issue. Every support ticket that came into me for a while, I handled it differently. That's not a business. Every fulfillment, I handled it differently. Every close, I handled it differently. Every deal, I handled it differently. That is not a business. And it is a terrible way to run into this extreme burnout very quickly and get... Guys, that's like the fastest way I see entrepreneurs get depressed. Okay? It's so like, huh, there's so much opportunity out there, right? And there's been multiple times I've had to like catch myself again. I'm like, there's so much opportunity out there. Yeah, there is. There's tons of it. But not all of it is the best fit for, number one, my business. And not all of it is the best for the systems I've built. And maybe that means I need to go build more systems to handle the opportunities coming in. That's great. That's great. That's a good place to be. But not all of it is a good fit for my lifestyle. Okay? I am not here to die in my chair behind a desk. Okay? My goal is to build systems and processes so that every one of my leads, every one of my closes, every one of my sales, the fulfillment, every piece is systemized. So that I know exactly what is broken. I know exactly where to tweak stuff. And I know exactly where I can look at it and go emotionally. I can emotionally say, let's go on a vacation. The system will deal with it. And then I can come back. There was a time, right, in, uh, in college, there was a time. This is a good rant. Um, there was a time in college, um, one of the semesters that you do, you don't do anything but run a business, okay? And you start a business. It's one of the cool things I actually really did like about where I went to college. There's only three programs like it in the country. And uh, we, were, we were, at that time anyway, I don't know if more people do it, but one semester, you do nothing, okay? All, you don't have any classes, you do nothing but run a business from scratch. And so you get together, they put you with a group of random people and they give you an assignment. They put me in the food business. Guys, I am not a cook. They put me in the food business. And you went on a three day retreat with these guys. And at the end of it, you're supposed to have a business and you step back and then you got to build it for real and then actually go and collect cash from people. And, um, and we ended, we were doing two to three grand a week selling to poor college students. Okay. And I got voted to be the CEO, the first CEO. And I was excited about it. So he's really cool. I, I've always been a bit aggressive. I think they saw that. Okay. So I, I got voted to be CEO and it was super cool. Now, now this is what I did. I started where right, I created a marketing department, okay, uh, which was slightly foolish. I think everyone's in marketing, but anyways, so there's a marketing department, which at the time I still thought meant logos and crap. Um, um, I created a finance because we need to measure the numbers, right? That's the lifeblood of my of the business, so always know the numbers. Right? I created a supply chain because we were in a supply chain intensive business. We were selling empanadas. <laughs> okay. We, we did a bunch of research. We found out what people wanted. We literally created what they wanted. They told us what they wanted us to, wanted to give us money for. It's actually really fascinating. Anyway, different lesson. Um, and then I created a, um, I think that was it. So there's three, three branches. And what my role was, was here's, here's how the business worked for a while. This is, this, you don't build one this way. You don't build a funnel this way. I don't care if you're working on your own. Okay. This is how you do it. Okay. You, um, um, 
So the, anyway, the first thing that I did is I went, <laughs> I ordered Uber Eats. The guy just showed up. This is going to be funny. What's up? <laughs> oh, thanks, dude. <laughs> okay, think about this. The first way I handled everything, and we went and we launched and we started doing one and a half to two grand a week. Okay. And I was like, okay, that's not bad. The poor college students selling on campus, right? Wasn't bad. They told us what they wanted wanted us to make. They, I didn't even know what an empanada was. Um, they told us what they wanted to, to, to price, even sell at, things like that. It was, it was fascinating. Okay? It was very, very fascinating. The issue was every single decision that had to be made came to me. I was literally the bottleneck of every decision, every single thing inside of my business. There was... There was no aspect of it where autonomy was for those individuals. There's no aspect of it. Thanks, man. Yeah. Right? There was no there was no piece where where they could actually go and actually make decisions on their own, which meant I was 24-7 on the phone, 24-7 on call, 24-7. What do you want? What do you want? Okay, yeah, do that. Okay, yes, do that. Okay. Marketing, okay, you do this. Okay, marketing, okay. Supply chain, do this. Okay, finance, do this. Okay, bam, 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 bam. Hey, there was no absolutely zero. Um, um, autonomy for anybody else. I didn't mean to do it that way, but that's how most entrepreneurs operate. Okay. And so it said, I was like, I remember I was thinking one night, in fact, I've got the journal entry. They made us journal every day, what we were learning. And I got the journal entry right down there. Actually. Um, I realized that, so, okay, let's make a head of marketing and 80% of decisions are going to flow to that person in charge of marketing. Eight, which now I believe should be the actual entrepreneur, the actual, the actual CEO. 80% of decisions flowed to the person now in charge of finance. 80% of decisions that had to do with supply chain flowed to that person. And then they just came to me once a week and said, here's the other 20%. What should we do? What, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Okay. Now, when I actually built those systems and put them in place, our revenue increased. Isn't that funny? We actually started selling more when I was no longer the bottleneck of my own company. Okay. The second thing that I did, once I had those systems in place, the second thing that I did is I went and, and I, I started, right. Then we started fine tuning and I was like, Hey, that's that system. Boom. That's that system. Boom. That's that system. Whoa. I can like take a break. And so what I started doing is I started stressing the system and this is going to sound ludicrous and kind of nuts, but I purposely started disappearing in the middle of the busiest parts of the day. <laughs> I would just disappear. I, because I was watching them. I wanted to see what they would do. Will they follow the system, right? Is Are, are the people still the system or have we created an external thing that is uh, that they follow, right? right? And if the people are still the system, they're not going to follow it, okay? We got, we got emotions. You got to take emotion out of system building, okay? It should be emotionless, okay? That's why, the, that's why we do Trello so much. It's why we, in Two Comic Club Acts, we teach so much about systems, okay? Um, Ah, I can feel a rant. There's still another section I got to hit here. <laughs> but I started purposely disappearing to stress the system. And and they'd be like, where did you go? We needed to make this decision. I'd be like, oh, what happened? You know, and sometimes I'd be like hiding and I'd still be watching them. And they'd be having all these customers coming in, all these customers coming in. I'd be like, what are they doing? 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 And I'd see them running back and forth. They're cooking these empanadas. Supply chain's going nuts. Finance is like, ah, they're freaking out. Do we have enough money to get that supply? Do we have, you know, and, and I, would, I would watch them. And, uh, you know, this is a, it was quite a few of us. There's a lot of us. And so I was watching, I was watching everybody. And I would just disappear. And, and then I would stress the system. I'd be like, oh. And what I was mentally doing, what I was actually doing is I was trying to see where the holes were in the system I've built. And I go back and I patch it up and I was there for a while and maybe I was the bottleneck again to just get everyone back on their feet, but then train them back to the system, train them back to the system, train them back to the system and I would disappear again. Okay. And I would do that over and over and over again until finally the thing freaking ran on its own. And that's when they re it, it, when, uh, you know, they rotated the CEOs and that's when I finally got kicked out <laughs> and they're like, okay, Hey, that's awesome. And I set up the whole business and then left <laughs> and I was like, crap. <laughs> anyway, this is a lot of fun. Um, the reason this is important is because about the same time I was started building funnels for uh, this company in Florida and, um, very fascinating thing happened here. Okay. Very fascinating. Okay. And as soon as this rant is over, I promise we'll get back to this. Okay. We got 44 of us on. Thank you so much for being here. Um, anyway, uh, anyway, so at the same time, I started building these funnels for this company in Florida and I purposefully chose a company that was, they had a mid tiered product because I only needed to sell an extra few a month to make me look like a rock star to make the funnel numbers work really, really well. That's why I tell everybody start with a mid tier product. Don't start with something that's cheap. Start with something that's like a grand, you know, way easier. 
way easier to make it work. Um, anyway, I chose a product, a company that had a product that was already existing. I hate working with startups. Um, um, meaning I'll consult with them, but I don't build for them anymore because they don't have a business yet. They don't have any of those systems. So when the funnel has issues, because I said when, not if, when the funnel has issues, right? They're, they're gonna be like, oh, it's the funnel's fault. I'm like, no, you don't have a business. You're treating every support ticket different. You're treating every fulfillment. You ship differently for every single person. There is no consistently consistency in the way you sell. There's no script. You have no consistent script. You have no, right? You don't have a business, right? And that was the problem with working with startups for so long, right? They didn't have those things, right? Um, anyway, so, so I looked purposely for a company who had a mid-tier ticket product. I looked for a company that was already existing who had a buyer's list. I looked for something where there was a potential for repeat purchases. And um, those are some of the criteria. So I went and I found a company. They had no idea what funnels were, but I told them, hey, I'm gonna build you a funnel for free. I know you don't know what it is, but uh, if it works, let's talk, to me, talk about me getting paid. Does that sound good? And they said, sure. They said, sure. And I said, cool. So I went and I started building it and I went and I ran an ass campaign and to their existing buyers and learned some interesting things about that and learned it was really emotional, okay? It was in the health industry and these people were like, hey, I'm sitting next to my dying spouse. Like, we just really want a product that'll help X, Y, and Z. And I was like, whoa, got 157 responses. And uh, it took me three sessions to read them all because these were like emotionally dripping responses from these people. And it taught me exactly what it was that these people were wanting and how to craft the message for the products we already had. Does that make sense? How do I craft a message for the products that I already have? That's why we do session one as session one. That's what I mean by design marketing. It has nothing to do with freaking colors or logos. It has everything to do with storytelling and the message and the sales message behind it. Okay, so it's fascinating. So I went through and I ran the ask campaign, found what they wanted, built the funnel and launched it and made them an extra, you know, there was like 50-ish grand that came into that in like six weeks, you know, with just launching to their own list. And I was like, crap, that's freaking cool. And, and I was like, let's turn it up. Shortly after, they started calling me. I was, in, I was in Idaho still going to college. They were in Florida. They started calling me, dude, turn it off. I was like, what are you talking about? We're selling like hotcakes. They're like, I know. I was like, so why would I turn it off? That's a good thing, right? You got a bunch of sales coming in. This is awesome. Sale, 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 sale. They're like, no, turn it off. I was like, oh, whatever. And I stopped answering their calls for a little while. So finally the CEO came to me and he was like, dude, turn off the funnel. I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, you are going to bankrupt us. I said, what? He said, it's selling too fast. You're gonna kill my business. I had never considered until that moment that the funnel was not the business. Funnels aren't businesses, you guys. Here is the funnel, here is the business. They are two separate things. Once you have an idea and you, the market has voted with their wallets that it's a good idea, it is not enough to just go scale a funnel. You gotta scale the business at the same time or you kill the business, okay? You have to, okay? Otherwise, you literally outpace the business. It's the reason why, right, in my own business at the beginning of this year, man, we brought in like 200 grand real fast, bam! And I was like, I can't keep up with the revenue. And I, and I, I realized that I was a victim of my very own teachings that I did not have. There was no support ticketing system. The fulfillment was different every time. There was a lot of consistency in the way things sold because I'm a funnel builder, right? But there were some things in the way that I was handling some objections. There was some way that, I, right? And I was like, crap, I gotta, so I literally, and you guys might've seen the podcast episode where I talked about this. And this is the reason why my revenue was like, whoosh. My business was like, uh, and I was like, I gotta slow it down. So I stopped. I slowed the revenue down on purpose to build the business, build the systems, get consistency. That frees up your mental shelf space so that you can operate. Otherwise, by default, if you have revenue up here and your business is right here, you have to work in your business rather than on your business. And that's what I started finding myself doing. And so I slowed the revenue down so I could build the business so I'd stop working in my business and start working on the business again and start doing this, okay? And build it together. And that's exactly what I do. So side rant, I know that's a huge, crazy side rant, Demetrius, what you're asking. But if they don't buy 
in that closing time, I do not sell them, even if they're willing to give me their cash, because they, I am I am building a system. I'm building a business. I'm not just trying to collect cash. And so there's a system that I've got in place, okay, to handle that stuff, okay. And so when people come to me, it's like it's like those guys. I know you guys have seen the posts on Facebook where someone's like, "He said no to Tony Robbins." That's freaking why. That's not my business to do that right now, okay. He said right. I pitched Tony Robbins. I was like, I constantly ask myself, what can I do to have larger cojones? Okay. <laughs> if I'm in some scenario and I'm talking to some major influencer, I'm like, what can I do to have large cojones in this very moment? Oh, I can pitch him. Yeah. And so I pitched Tony and we're talking face to face and he was wearing this brand of hat. That's why I'm wearing this hat. I like, it's a nice hat. I like the hat anyway, but it's Tony's too. So, you know, come on. <laughs> okay. And I was like, Hey, I'm not. And, and he said, yes, but I don't have a system in place. I don't have systems at the time. I do now. I didn't have systems enough in place at that time to handle all the other aspects that were going on, all the other revenue streams that were going on in my business. So it would have killed those other businesses for me to take on someone like Tony. Does that make sense? It's the reason why when someone has walked, multiple people have asked me. I have been offered obscene amounts of cash to build funnels for people. But if you don't have systems in place, you will literally kill your existing revenue streams. It means you are the business. You are working in your own company, which is a huge mistake. And nothing, there's not enough autonomy in the systems you've built to handle the flexibility. Case in point, okay? I love, I don't just love the book of the four-hour work week. I love how he wrote it, okay? If you think, listen, there's one lesson inside the four-hour work week that was very, very key. He said, for the first month or two, after launching a product, he said, I, he said, I personally handle every support ticket on my own, which I was doing. And I do it for the explicit reason of writing down every single question they are asking and logging every single answer I'm giving. Okay. And when I do that for 30 to 60 days, I literally am creating a training manual and I duplicate me. So then I can bring somebody in for 15 bucks an hour and say, hey, if they got questions, 99% of the questions they've asked are already gonna be right here. And here's your copy paste answer to that individual. Bam, system, okay? And then when there wasn't a little bit of, uh, um, you know, when there was no leeway, or you know, when, when there wasn't an, uh, a question and answer that he had already documented, okay? What he would do is he started giving them authority to make uh, decisions in his name up to a certain dollar amount. So he would say, Hey, you have decisions to make, right? Cause he'd start to get questions like, Hey, the customer said it didn't show up. Do I have authority to reship blank, blank, blank at it's going to cost the company this much money. And enough of those would start coming in or enough scenarios like that. He'd be like, why do I even, yeah, we're, we're going to do it anyway. We're, we're going to take care of the customer. Customer's not always right, but I do take care of the customer. Okay. Customer's not always right, but I do take care of the customer. Okay. And, um, I hate whoever, whoever said customers always right. That is freaking crap. That is the, that is the worst garbage on the planet. That's terrible. That person got straight A's in school and never ran a business. <laughs> um, anyway, so, um, um, anyway, so he said, I'm going to let, I'm going to give autonomy to my system to make decisions in my name up to a certain dollar amount. So once a week he would go and see all the emails back from his team on all the decisions he needed to make. And within two hours he would say, yes, no, good, bad, do this, do that, tweak this, you know, uh, uh, don't do that at all. And after a while he realized the majority of those questions coming in had to do with this certain area. So he's like, well, let's just add to the system. Hey everyone, you may now make decisions in my name up to a dollar amount of $50. Whew. Killed 80% of the tickets back to him from his own system. Okay. He just buffed it up. Okay. Anyway, so hopefully you guys understand like more about what this really is. This funnel funnels, you are creating a system to bring in, right? That's why I do my sales script, my webinar script, the same every time. That's the reason I write it out on every single slide, because if it's not consistent, I don't know what to switch. If it's not consistent, it means it's not a system. Okay. So I, I, these, that's a consistent sales system. That's what a funnel is. That's all it is, but it's not a business. You still got to go probably have support and fulfillment. Those are probably like the other two areas, right? Those are the other two spots you're probably going to build, right? You got those two, you got a sales machine, you can step away from it. That's a business. Okay. It's nothing saleable until nothing is sellable at all. Meaning the, the company itself, nothing in the company is sellable until you've got that anyway. Right. It's, it's like, it's like, 
Um, for the first year, if Russell was to leave ClickFunnels, ClickFunnels would have probably dwindled to nothing. But he's set up so many internal processes now. When I left, they created an internal agency to replace what Russell and I were doing. Okay, Because we realized duplication is not in finding another expert who replaces you. Duplication is in creating a system that replaces you. And so... Uh, when you go in and you uh, want to start removing yourself from the business, right? That's exactly what you're doing. You go bam, 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 bam. And you start building out the stuff like that and, and remove yourself from it. It's not that you're trying to remove yourself from the customer. You know, I still over deliver. I know I do. I still go and I do Q and A's. I do all that stuff. But when it comes to the purchasing process, fulfilling on what they bought, right? It's an exchange. I'm going to exchange the product for their money. It's going to be worth their time. But I'm also going to over deliver through several other things. But I'm also going to make sure that it's could like 99% of the time, the exact same scenario for every fulfillment, every buy, every uh, every support, right? Everything, anything in supply chain, everything. And so the easiest way to build those systems and put them in place, which is what I'm doing, right? Which is what you guys watched me do. That's really what I'm doing. Like mentally in my head, that's what I'm doing, right? I, I did not go build a second revenue funnel without having the support and the fulfillment in place to support it. The first funnel, I didn't care about any of that, right? I just cared about revenue. That's all you should care about too. And that's all I still care about, right? But in the order of launching a business like this, what I did and what I made sure I did is, first of all, who freaking cares about fulfillment or support if you can't fund it? So I don't care about those systems for a while, okay? I just need to go make sure that that sells, that my script sells, that the funnel's awesome. As soon as revenue's coming in, as soon as I don't, I start to document personally all the all the support tickets coming in. What are things that people are having questions with? Is this a question about the product? Is is it something about fulfillment? Is there a shipment that they didn't get that they should have? Okay, let's go put that in that category. Is this question? Is this question about the actual product itself? Maybe I don't have enough things in there, right? This game is about being a detective, not about being a, like prolific genius. I got to be this crazy creative to be successful. That's crap. Don't think, don't believe that. That's, that's garbage. Okay. So when you think through and you start actually going in and start building this stuff, you have to understand like, like first revenue, revenue is always first. Okay. But I don't think about support or fulfillment until I know that revenue thing is consistent and it just churns, baby. Then I go and I build the support to handle it, but I do it in a way that outperforms the revenue. So then I can go start putting on another funnel. That's when I go build a second revenue funnel. Okay. Which is what I'm doing. Why? Because I've got the systems in place with support. I've got the systems in place, right? And we're still building those things out. And we will always be building them out. But the 80%, whew, oh my gosh, takes so much mental shelf space. That's gone. And which means I now have mental capital to go invest in something like a brand new revenue stream. Okay? It's the reason why I don't take on more revenue than I can handle. It's because I've done that multiple times. And suddenly, like, you can't think about anything else. And you've got like... If you're an agent, it's like I hate the agency models. Like I take the money and I still have all this work to do. Whereas with products, uh, I, I do uh, I, mean, I do the work and then when they pay me, the work's done. You know what I mean? Anyway, hopefully, man, that was a rant. I'm probably going to rip that and make that a podcast. That was good. But uh, anyways, hopefully that makes sense though. So that's why I'm so forceful on what I said before. This is a 48-hour funnel. If they do not buy, I do not allow them to buy. It pushes them over to a waiting list. And um, sometimes it's uh, within a week, I might open it up for them again. Sometimes within six months to a year, you know? And I know that might sound nuts, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm building a business for me. I'm not for the business. And it's because of the systems in place. So anyway. Boom, if you're just starting out, you're probably studying a lot. That's good. You're probably geeking out on all the strategies also, right? That's also good. But the hardest part is figuring out what the market wants to buy and how you should sell it to them, right? That's also what I struggled with for a while until I learned the formula. So I created a special mastermind called an offer mind to get you on track with the right offer and more importantly, the right sales script to get it off the ground and sell it. Wanna come? There's small groups on purpose so I can answer your direct questions in person for two straight days. You can hold your spot by going to offermind.com. Again, that's offermind.com.